I've been at Carolina for nine years, and during this time, a new allergic disorder has come to light, alpha-gal allergy. This is a food allergy to red or mammalian meat. People with this condition break into hives or go into anaphylactic shock several hours after consuming beef or pork. I have diagnosed a fairly large cohort of patients with this distressing condition. Along with researchers at the University of Virginia, we are trying to better understand it, what causes it, what predicts the severity of the reaction, and ultimately, hopefully, how to make it go away. We are uniquely positioned to study this allergy because it occurs in certain geographic regions pointing to a possible environmental factor, and the North Carolina, Virginia, Tennessee area is one of them. I learned about alpha-gal allergy um, really basically as it was being discovered. So we, we came across a patient who was having allergic reactions to cetuximab, which is a chemotherapeutic agent that she was being used to treat her breast cancer. And she had what was clearly an allergic reaction to it, and we were asked to um, by her oncologist to consult on her because they wanted to find a way for her to tolerate the medication. And in working with the drug company at the time, I discovered that not just my patient, but several patients in this area, North Carolina, Tennessee, Virginia, were having allergic reactions to cetuximab, which was unusual because most, most allergies happened to something that you've been exposed to before. Mm -hmm. So you get exposed one time, you develop the allergy, then you get exposed again, you have the reaction. Whereas all these patients were getting chemo for the first time. I mean, it's not something they'd had before. So in trying to understand that, they discovered that what people were reacting to was this something called alpha-gal, which is a carbohydrate that's found on the cetuximab molecule, a drug molecule. And it's put there because this antibody is grown in a mouse cell line, and all lower mammals produce alpha-gal and mm -hmm. put, it in, uh, put, put it on their proteins. And so this mouse cell line was putting alpha-gal onto cetuximab. And the antibody that my patient had was an antibody to this alpha-gal. Well, at around the same time, there were some people who were also having reporting delayed reactions to red meat. And when their blood was checked for antibodies, it turns out they had the same antibody to alpha-gal as well. So, it turned, so these people who were reacting to red meat were essentially the same as my patient who was reacting to cetuximab, all of them were having this reaction. The common element was that they were all reacting to alpha-gal. Hmm. Paradigm within which we work, which is pretty rigid, which is that food allergy occurs to proteins. We don't think of carbohydrates as causing a problem. These reactions always happen right after you eat the food, and they happen reproducibly, so each and every time you eat the food. In fact, the way we, the gold standard test for food allergy is to feed a person the food and watch them and watch and see if they react. And if they don't react within the first hour, you pretty much tell them you're not allergic to the food. No matter what your test may say, that's the gold standard test for it. Mm -hmm. But alpha-gal, um, we know that it's a carbohydrate, it's a sugar, a carbohydrate, not a protein. Um, we know from our patients these reactions happen four to six hours later as opposed to right away and they don't happen each and every time you eat the food. So you could eat um, food today, like something like a steak today and be fine, um, and a month later you could eat steak and go into shock. Uh, it's not reproducible. Mm -hmm. And nobody knows why that is, but um, because it, you know, it, uh, it doesn't fit those three things that I just mentioned, uh, people don't, you know, people, some people don't even believe that it's a real food allergy. First of all, it's just very frustrating to my patients, especially, it's sort of ironic, this um, allergy happens in certain geographic areas, and North Carolina, Tennessee, Virginia is one of them. And um, as you know, in North Carolina, you know, barbecue is a big uh, deal. <laughs> and so you have people who are allergic, essentially, um, to something that's very common, in a very common food item. Mm -hmm. In fact, you know, pork in particular, is not just eaten in abundance in the form of barbecue or pulled pork, but it's also um, used as a flavoring mm -hmm. in just about everything. Baked beans and collard greens and green beans. I mean, you can barely go into a restaurant um, without being exposed to pork in some form or the other. There's lard in biscuits. I mean, it's all over the place. So mm -hmm. that's the other thing about this. This is unusual. Many food allergies actually are far more prevalent in children than in adults. And most adults who have food allergies have just retained it from childhood. Mm -hmm. There is a very small fraction of adults that develop a new food allergy. Alpha-gal, for whatever reason, seems to be acquired 
later in life and so it is I wouldn't say it's more common in adults. I think we certainly have diagnosed it more in adults. That's because we are looking. Um, I, I think it's there's nothing that precludes a child from developing it. I think we just don't look for it as much over there. But um, you know, because it's something you can develop later in life, you have led an entire life of eating beef and pork every day, and then to be told you can't have it again is very, very distressing to patients. Many, many patients are upset by it. So. The implications would be huge if we could figure out what causes it so that we could prevent other people from getting it. Mm -hmm. If we could figure out how to make it go away, we would make a whole lot of people very, very happy. But beyond all of that, beyond helping these patients, these very large, this very large number of patients that I have, I think it has implications for the whole field of food allergy because clearly if this violates all the rules of food allergy, our rules are not correct because the evidence stands the way it stands. And, and if this is what's happening, then our understanding must be limited. And there probably is a self-contained, um, consistent paradigm of food allergy, which is what we have, but I think it's just not the whole picture. So I think we need to step back and see it for what it is and see, you know, maybe food al our understanding of food allergy needs to be a lot broader and the traditional peanut allergy is a subset of that. But Afagal, I think, has the potential to allow us to see that big picture, which to me makes it incredibly fascinating. Mm -hmm.